Hi, this is Kerry with Learn Da Vinci Resolve, and today we've got some reader or some viewer questions. Uh, today's questions are going to come from Dan Past, and we'll get to them when we get right back. Well, I really enjoy getting readers or subscriber questions, viewer questions, and try and answer them for you as best I can. And today, Dan asked a couple questions. I'm just going to read his email here. He says, uh, could you do a tutorial on the database, setting it up, folder structure for projects, raw footage folders, various settings, capture and render cache folders, etc. Coming from Final Cut 7 and Premiere Background, the database seems a little confusing at first glance. Thanks again. I'm definitely looking into your title packs. Well, Dan, this is for you. Now, a couple things I'm going to say right off the top. Let's, uh, let's just kind of bounce over to the project manager here. Now, I don't tend to use the, the database, Postgres database, I should say. DaVinci Resolve has its own database where it stores all the projects and the settings, project settings, um, everything that you've done. But for the vast majority of people, you never have to think about that. Now, if I come up here to my projects and I look at my databases, I have my local database, which is a disk-based database, and I have Postgres SQL. I don't even have Postgres SQL installed, so I can't use that database. Now, I could create a new database here and decide whether it's disk or Postgres, give it a name, select a directory, uh, and, and go from there. But I, I personally don't have any need for that. The only time you need to use the Postgres SQL database is if you're working in a collaborative environment. So say I've got my machine here and I have my colorist at another machine and we're working on the same project, then we can have a Postgres database sitting somewhere, maybe on a shared drive with all the shared media, and we can be working on everything together. I don't do that, so I've never set it up. One of these days I'm going to just to go through the process of setting it up and show you how to do some collaboration stuff, I can have two machines using the same license because I have the activation key. I have my 5K iMac and I have my MacBook Pro. So one of these days I'm gonna do that, but I'm not really gonna go into it today. So for the simple answer to working with databases is don't think about it. It's really that simple. I, I never think about it. I don't even, um, I have, I don't, I literally don't even think about it. So it's just one of those things. In my projects, I can create new folders and I can group different types of projects together. I could have personal, I could have work, I could have clients, all those in different folders if I wanted to. So I could do that. If I needed to have my local disk database on a bigger drive, I could do that. I could create a new local database and put that on another drive. So I don't really think of the local database as being a database. Just think of it as being a project store or something like that. And it might be a little easier to comprehend. But for the most part, when it comes to the DaVinci database, I don't even think about it. So that's what I'm going to suggest for you, unless you're going to get into more uh, collaborative stuff, working with another person on the same project. Okay, folder structure for projects. Well, I'm going to show you my folder structure. So this is my uh, main backup drive here. This is my 2019 folder. In here, the way I organize media is by the year, uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, on my big network attached storage. That'll go back to like 2004 right now and have all the different years in it. Then inside of that, I have the date and the project or event or location, something like that to where it helps me at a glance remember what that was. I may have multiple trips to Roxborough or multiple trips to, uh, you know, something or multiple times I went out and just shot stock footage. So I have the date and a 
just a couple word description so that I can visualize what that is. Now inside of that, I might have multiple uh, folders. Let's see if uh, this is one of them. So in this particular folder, I have stills and I have video. In another one, I may have, well, I guess I don't have anything in that one. Let's see, Latuna. Um, so I have ProRes versus my regular footage. Uh, I guess I don't have it on this particular drive. Oh, here's a good example where I have stills and video, and that's typically going to come from my, my A camera, whether that's going to be my Sony a7 III or uh, Mavic 2 Pro or Inspire 2, something like that. Whatever my main camera is, is probably going to have where the primary video files are stored and the still files. And if I have a B camera, I typically point that out. So this was an Osmo Pocket that I used for some B-roll. So that's how I kind of organize my folder structure. And I say with raw footage, that's how I'm going to do it. My, if in some cases where I needed to transcode it first, um, I think in this case, this was Mavic 2 Pro footage, and it tends to be kind of laggy to work with. There's something about the codec that's not very efficient. So I tend to transcode these files into ProRes before I bring them into Resolve just to make it easier to edit those files. So I'll sometimes I'll have my raw footage, my transcoded footage, and I try and keep it a little organized. All right, so let's get into some different settings. Uh, I'm going to start with my DaVinci preferences. When we go into the main preferences, the very first thing is memory and CPU. Now the way this works, I have 32 gigs of RAM in this machine. And I can set Resolve to use up to 75% of that available RAM. So I have it maxed out to use 24 gigs. Now, in this particular case, I have just been working with some Fusion stuff. And when I'm doing a lot of Fusion work, I tend to crank up my Fusion memory cache as high as possible just to make working in Fusion a little more efficient. If I know I'm not going to be doing much in Fusion, then I may crank that down. If I'm only throwing in a couple titles or something, then I may crank that down just to give Resolve a little more headroom when it comes to working. Well, once you change these settings, you do have to hit save and then you have to relaunch Resolve. My GPU configuration, I always have just set an auto. I've never needed to do anything else. We go to our media storage. I can add map points in here. Um, don't tend to do that too often. Uh, decode options, video burn in, audio plugins. Um, the only time I need to go to audio plugins is when I've added new plugins. Then I need to come in here, make sure they're enabled, save it, and uh, then I should be good to go. On my control panels, I do have a tangent ripple uh, sitting here. So I have that set for the tangent devices element, which is what they suggested to use. And I'm kind of good to go there. If you don't have a color grading panel, you want to make sure this is set to none. Otherwise you may have some problems on startup. Under the general settings, again, I never change anything. I take all the defaults. Uh, there's nothing under advanced. Go under user, UI settings, um, use gray background for user interface or use gray background in viewers, personal preference there. I don't think it'll change if I, uh, I think actually after either restart or uh, reset the user interface before that'll take effect. But um, I tend to use the gray background in the viewers. Uh, that's really about the only thing I change in here. Project save and load make sure live save is turned on. That is a biggie. Now, I don't have it automatically save my project backups, but if that's something that you wanna do, you absolutely can do that. And on a big project, I will absolutely do that. On my YouTube videos, I don't bother to save the project backups. I just always, 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 always make sure that live save is turned on. 
editing. Uh, sometimes I change the start time code depending on the project I'm working on, how many video tracks I want to start with on a new timeline. Uh, same with audio tracks. Uh, I really don't change much of anything else in here. Uh, color preferences. Uh, again, there's really nothing I change in here. Fairlight, playback. Um, again, the control panels. Um, metadata. There isn't too much I change in the preferences. Also under the, the resolve menu is keyboard customization. If you are coming from Premiere or Final Cut, you actually can select an Apple Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or Avid Media Composer keyboard shortcuts. So some of those will be easier for you to remember if you're coming from one of those other programs. I came from Final Cut Pro and before that Premiere Pro, but for the last few years I was on Final Cut Pro. So I started with those keyboard shortcuts. And then once I was really comfortable with the interface, I wanted to really learn the DaVinci keyboard shortcuts. So I switched to DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve. And eventually I decided to uh, modify it for some of my own shortcuts I wanted to use. And that's where this carry one comes in. Okay, let's go under the project settings. And we'll start at the top, presets. Uh, once you have things kind of set the way you want, you can save it as the system config so that it will start up automatically in with those particular settings. Master settings. Um, oh, I guess I'm, I need to be on a kind of a new project here. So I'll just go new project, create. Now some of these settings will be active. So my timeline resolution for what resolution processing, I tend to edit everything on a 1080p timeline. Um, I really don't output 4K, so there's no need for me to change that. I absolutely could if I wanted to, but I don't really need to. Aspect ratio, timeline frame rate, and playback frame rate. Uh, now, I normally have these set at 23.976 at the start of any project. And if you are getting like weird audio playback and you have a nice machine, there should be no reason for it. It's probably because these don't match. If um, they don't match, that's the one first symptom is you'll get weird audio playback. So this is the only thing, this first box timeline format is the only thing I typically change in here. Well, except for we get down into the optimized media and media cache. So optimized media resolution, I let it choose automatically. Optimized media format. So if I come over here and say optimize media for it to create proxies, what media format do I want it to be in? Now my main camera is a Sony a7 III. I really don't ever, uh, there's really no way for me to push that over about 100 megabits. And 422 HQ, is going to be way too much overhead for only 100 megabit. If I use 422 proxy, these are going to be really short, you know, really small, very optimized, rather compressed uh, footage, but it's going to play back super, super fast. My render cache, same thing. I'm only starting with 100 megabit footage, so why use a codec that is going to have four or five times that? capability. All I'm going to get are the same quality with huge files. So in my case, I'm going to use ProRes 422LT because that has a max bit rate of 135 megabits. And when I'm shooting at 100, um, I'm going to be adding a little padding to the file, but not significantly like I would with the other ones. I make sure to enable background caching is turned on after five seconds. Um, and that's really about the only settings I use in here. You have options for scaling. Um, again, really, I don't really change anything in here. If I'm going to change something on a clip, I can change it in the inspector. So I really don't manage it here. Color management. This is where we're going to add LUTs. So if you've downloaded some LUTs that you want to use, you open the LUT folder here. It will show you your list of LUTs. You just drag them in, drop them in place, 
and then save this. And once it's saved, you want to make sure you click Update Lists, and that way it will appear in the LUTs folder. If you're working with broadcast safe levels, you need to know what those levels are so that you can set that appropriately under broadcast safe. Uh, the rest of these items in here, I don't really change at all. We'll go to general options. Um, I don't think I've ever messed with anything in here. If you're outputting to broadcast or Hulu, Netflix, something like that, they're going to tell you what your target loudness level is so you can adjust that in here and make sure that you are in compliance with what they're doing there's certainly a lot of options in here for other formats with color and things that i don't really deal with camera raw uh, what's your raw profile there's canon raw cinema dng panasonic vericam phantom cine red sony raw um, you know, only once in a blue moon have I worked with Cinema DNG, and I don't have one of the Blackmagic cameras, so I don't have Blackmagic RAW. Hopefully, they'll add ProRes RAW in here at some point, and that would be really nice. But if you're working with RAW, you want to make sure that you have the correct RAW profile in here, and how you want it to decode, and how you uh, decode using the RE default custom metadata. So if I chose Cinema DNG, full res and Cinema DNG default or camera metadata or my project settings. Uh, capture and playback, well, I don't capture. I would have to have a deck set up to do capture, so I don't, so I don't ever play with this. And I don't do subtitles, so I don't really mess with this. So those are the basic settings that I work with. Uh, hopefully that has answered most of your questions there, Dan, and thanks for actually sending in some questions. You can send them to kgarrison at gmail.com. You can reach me at kerrygarrison.com. You can send comments here, feedback. You can click on the about and get my email address. I'm pretty easy to find. I'm on Facebook at Kerry Garrison. Uh, just search on Kerry Garrison. You'll find me somewhere. Uh, there should be links all over the place on how to reach me. So Dan, thank you so much for sending in those questions. Hopefully I have answered them for you as best I could. And if anyone else has any questions, be sure and let me know, and I will address them in a future video. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. Thank you all so much for participating, for commenting, for subscribing. Check out the 5,000 subscriber giveaway that's going on right now. There are some very cool giveaways from LoomCube, from Blackmagic, from Low Post, and myself giving away some stuff. So check that out in the description below. Thanks, everyone. Be sure and subscribe. Click like if you like the video. If you don't, click the dislike twice. Really make it count. And as always, click the bell icon to be notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Carrie. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.